Today's project, and I hope to finish, is uh, on a snowy day. Is this? It's called a majorette. I've taken the changer out. It's a stereo record player from about. Well, at first I said 1964, and I can verify that because right in there is the date, August 12th, 1964. I've gone ahead and taken the changer out. Uh, I have a problem. Well, the changer, one thing, is the motor is turned to sludge. And on this one, you simply take out the uh, cap. GE's are like this, too. Take out this uh, plug, and you can get to one of the two shipping fasteners clips that you flip and this is slotted so you can pull the changer out. So the changer is out. I haven't found any other goodies in here. A couple of pieces of cardboard. I found, uh, oh, let's see. Let me close this up here so it doesn't come crashing down on us. Okay. I found a few pieces of cardboard. One of the screws, a piece of plastic, which I don't know what goes to, and a piece of a broken record, and a piece of Champion spark plug cardboard, and it says lawnmower on the other side. And that's about it for goodies inside this one. This is the transistorized model. They made two models of these, two versions. One with tube amplification. It had a 50C5 and a 12AX7 preamplifier. Single ended. It had the uh, same player. And this one, it appears they've used the same chassis. You can you can't see it so much on this side, but the tube sockets, the tube sockets, the tube holes, the punches for the tubes are there. One, two, three tubes, and the electrolytic capacitor. This one has it mounted that way, but okay. So the 12AX7 would have been in the middle. So this doesn't even follow that chassis. In any event, so here we are, our Majorette solid state version. Um, I've gone ahead and done thus far. Let me show you the changer real quick. This is the changer. It even cycles uh, by hand quite nicely. It doesn't bind up or anything. But... Um, I want to show you the cartridge too. It has the uh, the turnover style. It's in a static 80TS. I think the tip is gone on the uh, LP side. Uh, LP4578 tip seems to be there. Uh, the motor is frozen solid on this and the idler is turned to uh, stone. But overall, not bad. We'll service the changer. It needs the usual lubrication, oiling, and whatnot. We'll get to that. Back on the amplifier, I'll turn it on. It has one main filter cap on the other side, which I, you can't see, but um, these are the coupling capacitors for the speakers there. Um, so we have channel one, channel two. The left channel channel one is working okay I can touch the base and I get a pretty good signal however this one nothing a little bit on the driver for that channel the driver is there and it matches the driver on the other channel so without going into too much detail here, volume for the 
working channel, nothing on the right channel. Uh, my suspect is uh, these two, one of these two capacitors right there, and actually I think it's, uh, oh, I'm guessing, here we are, right, let get to some focus, let's see, we're right here in this area over here, I'm talking, there's our driver, so we have it here, I haven't checked any voltages yet, nothing on the volume, so it's either C7, is dried up, I'm guessing. It's a chance the transistor could be bad. I'll check the voltages, but we got a 5 and a 5 here. Um, it's one of these two. I'm guessing it's this one. So that'll do it for now. Uh, more to come on that later, and I'm missing one knob. Well, I should be able to find something close. And I'm missing a knob bright, that they call them for that. Alright, I have a cassette deck into the inputs of the phonograph. And I have the left channel. And we have our dead right channel, but already I can tell when I hook a capacitor up to the uh, base of that driver transistor there. And I hit the other side of the cap. Oh, let me turn the volume up. It's picking it up without even it connected. Just picking it up through the air. Who knows? So anyway, so now we have both channels. So it's that one right, they both don't test that good anyway, but it's the uh, one feeding the base of the driver, which is C7 right there dried up. So we'll stick that's a 4.7. We'll stick two 4.7s in, in the place of those fives. Clean the pots and these two back here check okay, but we'll see where we get. Let's get both channels running. Okay, back on the amplifier here for the majorette. Uh, I've gone ahead and changed those two electrolytics, the one that was open. I haven't touched our left channel, or channel 1, because uh, it's working okay. It's over there. Our right channel, though, and I have those capacitors connected properly. The right channel is just not... The ground below. It sounds on a faster side. It's not. It's not right. So I checked. I check at the driver stage here. It's hard to do with the speakers going, but I have an amplifier here set up. These amplified headphones. And if I check the bass, it's weak, but. It's okay. I, I don't know if you can even hear that, but we go to the collector. The collector of the driver sounds fine. This is the suspect channel here. The collector on the other channel. Also sounds okay. So that tells us that right here is okay. Yeah, the positive goes to the volume. On both. The negative goes to the next stage, which is the driver. I think I've even checked the uh, outputs and they're fine. The driver. The driver sounds fine too. Um, go to the base of the driver here. Nothing there. Am I on the right one? Uh. Okay, take that back. This is the first stage of amplification here. This is the driver. The sound is okay at the driver 
which is here. Okay, so the voltages I've checked, the voltages are all all fine. We've got our minus 10. One thing, the minus 5 on this channel is like minus 3, 8, and it is a, like 4.5 over here on the good channel, on the left channel. But I'm not too worried about that. I'm thinking the uh, capacitor that goes to the speakers or something. Well, let's check the um, let's check the base of each each one of these outputs, which are right here on the back. Gotta be real careful with these transistors, and my jack here is a little intermittent. Okay, but I'm on the base of that output there, and it sounds fine. And go to the base of the other channel. I'm suspecting one of these is dried out. No. And you can hear that. gets better for a second but no no big difference there There's something going on here I don't know if it's a it's like a noisy resistor off the check The sound is good here, though. Something, something. Oh, look at this. Let me here. Let me get some focus. This terminal has no solder on it from the factory, right to that output transistor. I can't zoom in, I'll lose focus. Listen to that. Beautiful. There it is. Beautiful. It's not always capacitors. In this case, it was combination. These are fine. So I got the right channel back by replacing one of these. I think it was C7. I'm going to check them later. And that's the defect right there. No solder. We'll hit that with some solder and the iron and give it a whirl. Okay, we're going to put some solder on this sucker. My iron fell off. I was trying to do this one-handed, but I'm going to uh, put the camera down a minute and flow this out just a little more. Okay. This little tool here was used on transistors to um, keep the heat away from them. Because the heat would destroy them. I'm not in love with that connection. I did scrape it. It's okay, but uh, seeing it was... I did scrape it, um, but yeah, I'm going to leave that. Let's give it a try. Here we are. Oh. I'm missing one knob. I took the other knob off because I just wanted to deal with volume, not this tone left, tone right business. So there you have it. Do I even do the other capacitors? I suppose. And I want to get on to the changer. Um, there's some slight filter hum, but I don't even know if that's filter hum or just... That one sounds good. 
That sounds much better. Beautiful. So to recap, I checked the voltages. Actually, I checked, I jumped across these two capacitors first and I got sound, so I replaced those. Then I checked the voltages. And then I brought out the amplified uh, headphones here. And I have a blocking capacitor in this jack here that will stop any DC from getting to the, the headset. And I've used those for years and I will find which stage uh, is the failure. And what's funny is it was good here, it was good here, and it was also good here. But not at the speaker. And that's the, uh, I believe, the emitter. So, is that the emitter? I did mark it here. Yeah, that's the emitter right here. So it was this emitter resistor here going to ground. All crispy, crusty right here. Must have been that way for a while. It was probably getting staticky and distorted. Probably worked for a little while. Then started getting all... Oh, all oh, crusty. Um, so that's our channel two. The X is gone. It runs fine. Uh, next we'll do the maybe the maybe the input filter cap and the other one here, the two power supply caps and oh, they will do these ones for the speakers here and and that's going to be it for this. On to the record changer. <laughs> Let's say these germanium amplifiers do have a, an odd sound. Well, they're different sounding is all. Cambridge request for orchestral maneuvers in the dark and, and no the gay on BOS. During all this, I ran out of solder, so I've picked up some over the years, and I was looking for this solder here, the 44, that's what I was using, and I ran out of. 
30 year supply. We'll have another 30 year supply here. And I had this here. This is new and improved. Let me get some focus. This was new and improved. 59 cents for an ounce TV radio solder. Was owned by Litton at this point. This, the latest one here, still Litton, they added Singapore to the mix and moved Chicago to, to the Plains. Am I saying that right? Illinois. And what I rolled on the uh, old spool here is a little bit of this solder. Resin 5 it's called. Making sure it's television electronic solder. You don't want the acid solder. We know that. Um, this is probably pretty old. Better solder for TV, television. Yeah. Okay. So... This solder, it does work pretty well. I did use it on the uh, speaker capacitors there, and uh, that, that flows pretty good. It's resin 5 solder versus 44. Whatever. Still smells like pine trees to me. Uh, this is resin 44, this box here. So I don't know when the transition was made from resin 5 to 44. And the uh, old one came with a little booklet on how to use your Kester solder. And the acid core there, that's what you don't want to use. I've never even seen acid core solder. Inside, what do we have? Preparing the sur surface. Yeah, the old alcohol torch there. I guess those used to blow up. That's what I'm told. Gasoline blow torch, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Celebrate. So have a beer for Bunker Hill. BOS, this is the whole gas. These are the whole gas. I got some oil warming near the stove to put the bearings in for the record changer. So on to the turntable. Okay, on a on this anyway to uh, to turn on the amplifiers, the two middle ones, the black and the gray, where you can operate the amplifier without the turntable. And I have the uh, little pigtail here to get started with on the changer when it's on the bench. Here, move the three uh, E-clips there, C-clips, whatever you want to call them. I tried to use something that wouldn't scratch anything and uh, take pictures here there's our motor with our seems to be turning now maybe it's because it's a little warmer but we're gonna take the bearings off and clean this up and uh, soak the bearings 
I've made note of which way the um, the top bearing is. I have the alliance, and I put a hash mark just as you see it. Uh, there's two schools of thought. I knew one rebuilder. He would flip the bearing around 180 degrees well, on the putback and put it back that way to get some run time on the other side. I don't know. Jury's out on that, but I, I did make note of which way the bottom bearing was in and which way these little spacers went. One has an indent and one is flat. The flat goes towards the motor and the cup side, I'll call it, faces up. This is what we're going to soak and clean. This and this. Now there's a, a foam wick in there and I knew some folks would soak them in lacquer thinner, then he realized I shouldn't be soaking them in lacquer thinner because it will break down the uh, the wick material in there. So um, we're just going to soak it in oil. I'm not even going to, I don't even think I'm going to like do any cleaning. I'm just going to let the oil see if it'll soak. I suppose we could see if it takes a few right now. Um, I'm just going to warm them up and uh, in the can of oil, but just see if it if it will drink some, or if they're hard as a rock. No, it's still wicking, so I'm just going to throw them in the oil, and that'll be good. This piece you do not want to drop. This is your precision armature. You drop it, it gets bent, the magnetic properties change. This you want to be real careful with. And I'm not so much on folks saying on the BSRs, I'll file down the uh, armature to get it to play the right speed. The uh, jury's out on that. I'm not uh, I'm not going to file. What are you going to file each step and check each speed? Um, I just as soon leave it be. Especially with something like this, it's so precision machined that why would you want to mess with that? You'll never get it as good as the factory. We'll just let this sit a little bit while those bearings are soaking. Idlers rock hard, we knew that. I'm going to put the motor in and try it. It cycled pretty easy, but I will take the transmission out and uh, get to that. But for now, that's where we'll stop. Okay, after soaking in some nice, warm, almost hot oil, um, that's wick is pretty lubricated there. That's that one's good also. And I, I've had, these are oil light bearings, meaning they're they're actually porous, and the oil gets inside and it self lubricates itself. Um, the wick adds you know added extra oil when it needs it, whatnot. I've actually seen someone I, on another site when they disassembled a, a motor is they actually had have these bearings under pressure to actually draw the oil into the pores I'm not going to get that carried away with it but they they do it under pressure or under vacuum so the oil actually does get into those bearings my motor is reassembled I'm just going to give it a little run test here even hear it running. Good. We'll run it a few minutes and um, run it a few minutes, see how warm it gets and uh, what is it drawing? No load. 12.6 watts. A little load on it. Well, it doesn't really affect it too much. Okay. Hundred eighty milliamps. And let's see how it coasts. I'm happy with that. As you can hear, the uh, idler is rock hard but the uh, 
Not enough to cycle it. Oh, it almost does stalls there, but... It's enough to shut it off, though. this thing set up a little better and continue on. Next I will test the cartridge. I assume it's dead. I already know it's dead but I'll verify that. I haven't determined what setup I want to put in here yet. I've gone ahead and tested the uh, ADTS cartridge here and it's it's completely dead both channels. I thought by this time they were using ceramic elements here, so I don't know where, maybe at the connection end, I don't know what it goes dead on this. It's not uh, crystal. And I've never cared for this, this setup here with the turnover stylus because it lacks the half inch mounts for a standard cartridge. It will fit something. I just want to note the setting of the uh, stylus pressure. It's on the 5 of 10. Let me get a look at this tone arm. Can th this can be funky going back together sometimes. That spring here. Okay, so it's about that. Get some focus. So we're about that far in and we'll clean all this fuzz off of here. <laughs> 